All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house. And today I've got the Concept Knives T1012 T2 here with me for a review. And we're going to analyze the look, the sound, and the feel of this guy. But hey, don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this kind of content. So let's see how big this guy is uh, because Concept sent this prototype to uh, review. Uh, so overall length is going to be 8 inches with a 3.5 inch long blade and 4.5 inch long handle. Uh, this is called the uh, T1012 uh, T2 right over here um, knife uh, and it's uh, it's an interesting one so let's see how big this guy is uh, let's just compare it up against the Bestic uh, uh, knives dolphin for example that we have here and up against the Bestec uh, Knives Shogun, uh, smaller than both of these guys. And uh, uh, another couple here, we have the Ruiki uh, P128 and another Ruiki here is the P801. Uh, so also budget knives this guy of course is a little bit more expensive it should be in the hundred and forty dollar range I'm not sure because this is still not in production it's just a prototype they sent in another concept knife this is the Genesis and it's a little bit bigger than that and uh, let's do uh, some uh, classic uh, comparison right over here of course you've got your Ontario Rat number two uh, followed by the Ontario Rat number one which you can see that is still a big boy and of course your Spyderco Para 3 right up there you can check that the handle size is kind of like the same but cutting edge of the concept wins because we are in the range of the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 actually and uh, still having more cutting edge. Uh, right up here you find the uh, Chris Reeve uh, knives small Sebenza 21 down here you find the Chris Reeve knives large Sebenza 21 and as you can see it's uh, the concept is smaller than the Sebenza the large one. Uh, this is the Custom Knife Factory 520 and it's smaller uh, just a little bit smaller than the concept but uh, of course uh, the custom knife factory snafu 2.0 is a big boy and we know and it's bigger than the concept uh, let's see how this uh, guy compares uh, with the shirogorov neon zero very very similar very very similar and uh, of course uh, shirogorov f95 r slim it's a bigger uh, option for sure and um, what else can I show you? Another couple, just 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 because we have them around. Uh, Hinder knives, uh, XM18, Koenig knives, uh, Arius Generation 4, Style 55. So you have the idea, right? You get it. It's a it's a it's a, it's a big knife, yes, uh, but it's slender. It's um, it's an interesting uh, concept. Uh, it's uh, a liner lock uh, with stainless steel liners and uh, uh, G10 scales, uh, nicely contoured. Uh, it's nicely done, precisely, precisely done. I have to say. Uh, it's a front flipper. Uh, you've got um, uh, these uh, uh, liners which are perfectly, perfectly matched with the scales. Um, there is no uh, internal skeletonization for the uh, liners. You've got uh, a couple standoffs uh, right over here. Um, one liner hole drilled through the scales and the liners. Uh, of course you've got uh, uh, your liner lock which is stainless steel against stainless steel so there's no need for any uh, lock face insert uh, the scale here is going to act as a natural uh, lock bar stabilizer and you know over travel uh, for sure uh, you have uh, also uh, some nice uh, uh, t8 and t6 uh, torx bit screws which are flush with the handle nice clean look i like these lines where the blade is completely buried down um, and just flush like that uh, with the handle really really cool looking super simple construction very very straightforward disassembly for this guy uh, you've got um, uh, a nice uh, uh, pocket clip uh, blacked out uh, it's nicely sculpted uh, good amount of tension tip up carry only right side only it's not reversible and it's just gonna stay right there uh, you have uh, 
a long tanto uh, blade, uh, uh, very, very unusual. You have this, this kind of like, uh, not a sheep foot, but it's it's a modified tanto blade and long, uh, um, long descending edge up to this point where it intersects uh, this dual um, uh, bevel and straight up to the sharpening choil. Really, really good slicer. Thin, thin blade, nice fuller, blacked out. Uh, um, the steel, I think it's S35VN. There's no marking. They didn't say anything. Uh, you can actually see uh, Mac, uh, Max uh, Cha uh, Chuk, which is uh, uh, probably not how you pronounce his name, but that's the designer of the knife, uh, which did a pretty slick job. I have uh, uh, only, you know, I think that this blade, like a drop point, regular drop point, would have been uh, nicer, or just like a worn cliff blade, probably uh, would have worked better in my opinion but overall I mean it's a slick one for sure uh, elegant uh, light and slim and slick so it's uh, it's doing a good job but that for sure and uh, um, also like if you hear the sound it's nicely muffled unobtrusive very discreet it's something that you don't even associate to like a knife opening it's clock, it's uh, muffled, it's uh, it's dense, and it's low pitch and low volume, so very, very discreet. Um, also, uh, what's gonna be good is gonna be the weight, because this is gonna be weighting in at 3.3 ounces. Uh, it has a nice, uh, uh, nice grip, uh, even if it's slender and this thin. Um, no sharp edges, no hot spots. Uh, there's no, there's a little bit of jimping, but it's not really that functional. Um, but overall, it feels good. There is a little bit of flex, of course, because of the structure. It's naturally uh, occurring because of these two standoffs are a little bit on the far side, but uh, nonetheless gives you like uh, some degree of reliability uh, when you when you choke this up. I mean, can't really choke this up, but you can squeeze it and uh, uh, you feel that it's substantial, but it's not like the most robust knife ever. You're not going to go batoning with this one for sure. Um, fit and finish looks good. Uh, looks on uh, spot on. I don't see any like uh, lips uh, or bad uh, alignments or anything. The blade is centered. There's no um, blade play. Uh, the clip has the right amount of tension. Nicely designed. I like the clip ramp right over here. Deployment speed is a little bit on the slow side because the geometry, I would have preferred maybe a little bit uh, bigger front flipper tab. Uh, I mean, the level of jimping is fine like for for the opening when you actually use it it's it's not enough i think so maybe a little bit more of that uh runs on bearings uh, nicely it's uh it's pretty smooth there's no kickback uh, the tent strength is on the uh, medium light side there is no rattling when shaken. You can't touch the tip when closed, so it's safe. Um, also, you've got uh, a nice cutout area here to access the lock bar to disengage it. So uh, no lock stick. It's uh, working nicely. There is no detent ball ramp, so you're gonna feel a little bit uh, of a hard step. You have a free fall as soon as you disengage the lock bar. No guillotine effect. You just need to wiggle a little bit to get the blade closed and flush to uh, just go and show you like this clean lines uh, of this uh, pretty sleek and elegant uh, uh, prototype from uh, Cancept. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. Stay tuned.